All right, so the demo I'm going to do is I'm going to take face it that we have so far that draws that face. I'm going to add a second MVC. Okay, and this MVC is going to have some emotions listed in it, and when you click on them, it's going to show a face that reflects that emotion. Okay, so I'm going to have two MVCs, and we're going to hook them up. Okay, so here we are back in face it, exactly where we were. I haven't uh, added anything or changed anything, right? So we've got our face view controller right here. It's got its model, which is a facial expression. And then it's got its view, which is this face view thing right here. We add some gestures. We update our UI when this thing is first set. Our update UI just takes the model, all these things out of the model, okay? And turns them into things in the view. And uh, then these are just the handlers for these gestures, and that's it. So that's all we have in our controller. Um, and our storyboard is really, really simple. It only has this one view controller, okay? This face view controller. And what I'm going to do right off the bat is add another MVC. So how do you add another MVC to your storyboard? Well, you go over here to your object palette, and just like from your object palette, you can do things like uh, adding buttons and labels. You can also add entirely new MVCs. And the way you do that is by grabbing this thing called view controller at the top and dragging it out into your storyboard. Okay? So I'm going to put it right there. You can move things around wherever you want. Okay? So now I have two MVCs in here. One really interesting thing to note is that a MVC always needs to have a custom class. Okay? If it doesn't have a custom class, then where are you going to put your outlets and actions and all that stuff? So just like this view controller, if you look at its identity inspector, remember we changed its identity in the identity inspector to be face view controller, okay? So that makes it so that this class is the controller for that thing, so it has a model and outlets and things like that. Okay, we need to do the exact same thing with this view controller. It needs to have a custom class. So the way you create classes, you'll remember, just like we did when we created face view, for example, is we do new file here. Okay, so I'm going to do new file. It's going to be an iOS source. It's going to be a CocoTouch class because it's going to be a subclass of UI view controller, just like face view controller was. So I'm going to double click here. Um, here, subclass of, this is good. Okay, remember we did UI view before. Now we want UI view controller as our class. We don't want to call it view controller. That's a very generic name. So I'm going to call it emotions view controller because that's what it shows. This view controller shows emotions. Okay. Put it in the same place we always put it, right here, same, same as all our other code. And here we go. Here's our emotions view controller. Again, I'm going to remove these view controller lifecycle methods for now. Um, but notice also when I created this, I got this little method. What is this method? Let's prepare for segue. Okay, segues are so important to having multiple view controllers that when it gives you a blank one, it always gives you prepare for segue, comment it out, but it knows you're almost certainly going to want to prepare for segue. Okay, that's how important this is. And indeed, we are going to have to implement this if we want clicking on emotions to go to our other MVC and do things, okay? But we're not going to do this right now. The first, next thing we're going to do, and you'll forget this step, okay? You will for sure forget this step multiple times, which is we have to remember to go here and set in the identity inspector, the class of this thing to be that emotions view controller. A lot of times you'll create that emotions view controller and you just dive right in, you start programming and you forget to do this and then you can't connect any of your outlets and you're like, what's wrong with this thing? Okay, well this, this is why you forgot to set your identity here, okay? So now I have two, you see this one says emotions view controller and this one says face view controller, so two uh, MVCs. Notice this little arrow right here, you see this arrow? This arrow tells the app when it runs, start with this view controller. So if I were to run right now, it would show the face. But if I wanted to show my new view controller first, I can just pick this arrow up and drop it on this one. Okay? So let's go ahead and run, actually, to verify that. We should get a nice blank screen. Okay, here it is. Nice blank screen, working perfectly. Now, one thing to notice also is it uh, got a warning here. Let's see this warning. Scene is unreachable due to lack of entry points. It's talking about this scene, okay? By the way, we call these MVCs in the storyboard. This is called a scene, okay, a scene. So this scene is unreachable because this arrow doesn't point to it, and nothing in here segues to it. So you can't get to it, okay? Which makes sense. So it's good that it's warning us about that. 
All right, let me build the UI of this guy right here, okay? As I said, it's just gonna have some emotions in here that you can click on. Normally, you'd probably wanna do this with a table view, okay? A table, an extensible list of them, but I can't, I'm not teaching a table view till next week, so we're gonna use buttons, all right? So I'm just gonna drag out four buttons here um, to be my, um, uh, the, the four emotions that I'm gonna have here. Sorry, put this in here. Uh, and when I drag it out, it doesn't really matter where I put it because I'm going to stack view them, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, make the font a little bigger here. Let's go 40 point. And uh, so what buttons do we want to have here? How about an angry button? And um, we'll have three other buttons. How about uh, happy? And um, how about worried? Is that a, an emotion? Worried? I don't, I don't know. It's good to make a face of it, though. How about mischievous? Mischievous, is that how you spell that? Um, again, I'm not sure that's an emotion, but uh, it makes a good face. Okay, so here I have my things. I'm gonna stack view these. Just gonna select them all and go embed in stack view. I don't want them left aligned like this, so I'm gonna change their alignment to fill the space. I'll do fill equally, although they're all the same uh, font, so they're all gonna be the same height anyway, so it doesn't really matter uh, there. Um, so I want these words to always be in the middle of my screen, even if I'm rotated, like if I'm in landscape or portrait, I always want them in the middle. So I'm gonna use the dashed blue lines to put it right in the middle, and then I'm gonna do the same trick we did before, which was reset to suggested constraints, and it's gonna use those blue lines to suggest some constraints, to constrain this stack view on here. And let's go look what it suggested. Remember to do that, we go over here to the size inspector, we go down to where it says constraints, and sure enough, align the center on the x-axis to super view and align the center on the y-axis to super view. Perfect, exactly what I want. So now if I run, it's gonna center this horizontally and vertically, okay, even if I'm in a uh, landscape. Okay, so now I've built this UI. It's great, it's exactly what I want. And I now have two MVCs. Now, I'm gonna show you all three ways of combining MVCs, tab bars, split view controllers, and navigation controllers. Let's start with tab bar controller. Okay, how would I put these two things, one in its, each in its own tab? Well, I'm gonna go down here, okay, to our uh, object palette, and if you look, about six or seven down, there's this, tab bar controller, you see that? And if I drag this out here, okay, it'll put this tab bar out here. It unfortunately also brings some extra MVCs here, these little blank uh, MVCs that I don't want. So I'm just gonna click on those and delete them. So get rid of that one and get rid of that one. So all I have now is my tab bar controller. If you can read that, I'll zoom in a little. Okay, see, tab bar controller. And then I've got my two MVCs here that I created, my emotions view controller and my face view controller. Now, I for sure want the app to start with the tab bar controller. So I'm gonna move that arrow. This is another thing you'll forget. You'll forget to move this arrow, okay? Um, and now I just want this to be in one tab and this in the other. I just do that with control drag. So control drag to this one. I'm gonna hook up this view controllers. Remember the view controllers property in a tab bar is just an array of all the tabs, okay? The MVCs that are in the tabs. And I'll do this one also. Hook that in the view controllers array, okay? You can even see it's already starting to put the tabs on the bottom. If you wanted to edit what's in these tabs, like the names, you think, oh, you double click down here or something, but no, because this is the tab bar controller and these titles and images are all set by the MVCs inside, okay, in an object-oriented way, right? Um, so if you wanted to set this, you would actually go to each one of them and you can even double click right here and put in whatever you want. Um, you can also click here and inspect them Okay, if you go to the inspector, you can uh, set images. There's also a bunch of system ones, okay? Um, so that's how, how you set that. So this is what our uh, storyboard looks like right now. And if we run this, we'll see that we get a tab bar. You see it's got two tabs at the bottom here. And if I click between them, I get my two MVCs. Now, this is completely inappropriate to what I'm building here because I would never want, if I clicked on one of these, for it to switch over to this tab, okay? That's because when you do a tab bar UI, listen closely, the user owns which tab is showing. 
Okay, they get to choose by clicking on those tabs. You don't get to choose by throwing them over to one. Okay, that is not appropriate for tab bar. Everyone got that? So things in a tab bar UI tend to be independent things, things that don't segue from one to another. We re you can't even make a segue from one tab to another. There's no such segue. Okay? So we don't want to do a tab bar controller here, so I'm just going to delete my tab bar controller. Okay? Now one thing you'll notice when I deleted my tab bar controller is, where's my arrow? Okay? It's gone. So now it's not going to, if I run, I'm actually going to get an error in the console saying, I don't know where to start in my storyboard, basically. So how do you get that arrow back? Just click the one you want the arrow to be on, inspect it, and go right down here, very top, is initial view controller. If you turn that on, the arrow will come back there. Okay, and you can move it, okay, down to here if you want. Okay? All right, so let's talk about split view controller. We haven't even done anything with iPad at all in this class yet, so this is our first time doing it. And we're going to put this in a split view controller where this is the master and this is the detail. Makes sense, right? Because if we're clicking in the master, this would be the detail that's shown from, from clicking on this. So how do we do a split view controller? Same way as tab bar. I'm going to go down here. Right below tab bar is split view controller. I'm going to drag that out. I get a whole bunch of junk with it. We'll zoom out so you can see it. Okay. See, I got all these extra things. So I'm going to um, click on these extra things and delete them. Don't want any of them. Okay. So I just have the split view controller and my two guys here. Of course, I want the split view controller, again, to be the start. So I'm going to put the arrow there. And then, in order to hook up master in detail, control drag, master, control drag, detail. Okay? So that's how we set it up. Couldn't be simpler. So let's run, but let's run on iPad. So I'm going to, an iPad 2 here, we'll run. And hopefully, this will show up as a master, and this will be the detail. All right, so here's the iPad, here's the detail. You notice that when it's in portrait, it fills the screen with the detail, and you get the master by dragging out from the side. See that? Okay, that's how you get the master. And if you're in landscape, then they're both on screen at the same time. Now, if I click on these, I want this face to show me angry, show me happy, show me worried, show me mischievous. Okay, so how do I do that? This is where the segues come in. Okay, this is where we have to uh, have this view controller segue to create a new one of these. And when it creates this, it's going to create it with the proper facial expression. Okay, so it's going to prepare it with the facial expression and show it. Okay, so let's do those segues. The way we do segues, also control drag. So let me zoom in here so you can see this. All right, I'm going to control drag from whichever of these buttons I want to segue from. I'm going to segue from all four, so I'm going to have four segues. So like angry here, I'm just going to control drag down to this MVC and let go, and it says, well, what kind of segue do you want? Show, show detail, modally, or popover? Well, we're in the split view controller here, so I want to show detail, right? Split view, master detail, show detail. Bam. There it is right there, okay? Created this little thing here. That's my segue. 